What in tarnation? Hello folks, this is Apple Geek, and here we are on another fine Saturday with another episode. This is Season 7, Episode 22, Do Not Know Title. Uh, again, I have fortunately been able to stay spoiler-free for the remainder of the stuff this season thus far, so I know nothing about this. Uh, I still question where we're going with all these legend stories. I'm not sure if we're quite done with those yet, or if I'm positive they're going to have to tie into the finale somehow. I just don't know if there's any more episodes going to be devoted to that before the end of this here, because still haven't seen Star Swirl, and I don't know if they're planning to actually go that far or not. I know they've been hesitant to really do much with Star Swirl in the series, so we'll just have to wait and see. But anyway, and as I was looking over this the season thus far, and really the it actually has been pretty fairly balanced in terms of, of focusing on the different characters and stuff. So I, I don't really feel like any characters, at least any of the more main characters, have actually been kind of left out of the spotlight this season. So, yeah, I I don't know what to expect with this one. So I'm, I'm just going to stop rambling right now and uh, give this a watch. So, episode 22, starting now. Oh, Twilight. That's a lot of paperwork. Uh-oh. <laughs> Whoa! We haven't seen that in a long time. I thought I had too many deep fried gems. <laughs> deep fried gems? What? Really? It's from my parents. Spike. <gasps> they were <laughs> and get to take the whole family. Yeah. Oh, I wish I had time to go with them. <laughs> there's just Forget the paperwork. Go. These I have to take care of. Come on, Twilight. Even Princess Celestia takes a break sometimes, and she raises the sun. <laughs> How did her parents send her that note through Spike anyway? I need a vacation. I can keep track of the friendship log, lose community more. Thank you, Spike! For a few days. But Spike, you're as much a part of my family as any pony. Oh! I just leave you here to do all that work. What? Oh. I can't hear you! You're on vacation! Thank you for that, Twilight. I guess I could use a little time off from being a princess. You're the best, Spike. <gasps> oh no. I'm gonna go pack everything neatly into one suitcase. I what one, one very it? large suitcase? Princess have activities, right? I should probably make a schedule. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word! A, cr a cruise? We get to see our parents, Mom. <laughs> I thought we were done with the families! I... Jack! Jack! <laughs> yes, one of my fans sent me this. Thank you so much. Perfect opportunity to use it. <gasps> oh. oh, this is gonna be good. Also, a cruise. We have not seen really much for ships in this world. Not, not that kind of ships. I... Mm -hmm. Is that an airship? Oh, gee, I am really looking forward to a relaxing vacation. <gasps> oh, geez, everybody! She won't admit it, but when your mother says relaxing vacation, she means doing something crazy. Last time, she ended up bungee jumping over Luna Bay. What was that, hon? Oh, I was uh, Luna Bay, another map Twilight location name. My new uh, bingo strategy book. It's a <laughs> real page turner. Oh, I yeah. can't wait to get on this Zeppelin and fly like a oh, Zeppelin! Really? I remember you getting air Interesting timing with the movie. Weather's wild ride at Pony Island. <laughs> oh, please. I grew out of air sickness a long time ago. Wanna bet? <laughs> I hope you ponies feel welcome to Don't recognize anyone else there. <laughs> well, that was an assertive welcome. Hmm. Who, what? Okay, what was that all about? <laughs> I just happy to see the princess friendship? Mm. This is incredibly conveniently timed with the movie. <laughs> hey, Flurry Heart! Whoa, nice sweet. Guess this is what it's like to be big time prize winners. <laughs> <laughs> I just wish I could remember what contest we won. Wait, you don't know where this prize came from? I smell a rat. When some pony offers you a free vacation. You just sign the paperwork and don't ask questions. 
Especially oh, when it means we all boy, oh get boy. to fly off together. What should we do first? Well, I did categorize the ship's activities and make a schedule. And she's got a whole list. It looks like a convention Category. schedule. <laughs> Bingo competition right here. Oh, I just love how the numbers and letters are organized in their little boxes. It's so satisfying. Shining armor, they've got it. That's where she got that from. Tiny pool here. Aw, sis. Only you would remember I love tiny things. And Kimis, there's a Pee Wee Princess okay. playtime here that Flurry's gonna love. Ooh. <laughs> Wonderful. What a tummy! <laughs> <laughs> this barrel jumping at Niagara Falls sounds interesting. Niagara Falls. <laughs> <laughs> yes, cross it out. <laughs> you all have a good time, and this works out perfectly because we have room for the one thing I want to do. Our ship passes the frozen north at sunset, which is the only time you can see the astrological phenomenon oh. known as the Northern Stars. It's like the stars are shooting out of the setting sun. Oh, that sounds interesting. interesting. Well, we definitely don't want to miss that. That it's settled. Um. Hmm, but we don't have anything to do right now. Any suggestions? How about some family time? Just hang out, chat. Don't let this set one be a bore. Leave your room and see the core. The third room. The third room. Okay. Okay. Sure, sure. Another one. <laughs> I'm flying. I'm. Titanic reference. Uh, the, mm, mm, I think yeah. Flurry may be air sick. Since I know that isn't a problem for you, would you mind taking her below? Oh, sure, why not? Fire <laughs> or rest! You can just make out the white tufts of Cloudsdale, where Princess Twilight Sparkle once toured the weather factory. Oh, oh that How do you know that? And why announce it on a cruise? Oh, uh, why he's... don't we move to the other side of the deck? <laughs> because she's the guest, uh, VIP, the VIP guest star, and she doesn't even know it. Even the royal tree where Princess Twilight and her brother Shining Armor were born. What? Wait, what? Right. Huh? Ooh. Oh, there's a it's good one. Um, you guys know that's not where we were born. What are you so excited about? Well, it is a yeah. really nice tree, sweetheart. Where are we? <laughs> I wanted to say how excited we are to be here. Um, yeah. Us it is a convention. We will pass the spires of the Crystal Empire, where Princess Kings rescued her alicorn baby Spike. What? That doesn't even make sense. What? Well, that's Royal way off base. Sounds a bit fancy, but of course you can take our picture. <laughs> what? Well, where are we going with this? Ah, uh, you, you. Full convention. Did full get cosplay everything? <laughs> oh. Okay, that's it. Does any pony know where the cruise announcer is? Yeah, you got some splaining to do, buddy. You can call Iron Will, Iron Will. What, what else would we call you? you? Doing here? And why do you keep announcing random things about me and my family? Yeah. The assertiveness seminar market dried up, so Iron Will started a new career, organizing themed vacation packages. <laughs> and the theme of this vacation is... Every pony! Stop your hooves if you are here for the premiere cruise of the princess's experience. <laughs> okay then. <laughs> so he's turned into the the third flim flam brother. <laughs> Will, I'm not sure it was entirely honest of you to offer this cruise to my family without telling us that ponies bought tickets just to see Cadence and me. No. No kidding. Iron Will outlined all the details of the cruise in the prize acceptance and consent form that, that they signed and didn't read. Well, when some pony offers you a free vacation, who reads the fine print? Uh, <laughs> I probably would. On providing a quality vacation experience. But if Twilight Sparkle and her family don't want it, Iron Will can cancel the cruise and break the hearts of every princess adoring pony. Hey, guilt trip. Uh, I love you, Wow. As much as I want
want a family Okay, vacation. restraining order. I don't think I could entertain all these cruise ponies. My hooves are pretty full taking care of Flurry Heart. I guess we were just so excited by the idea of a family. Let's have a grandma and grandpa babysit. <sighs> all right. I guess we better turn this ship around. Mm -hmm. Wait, Iron Will. What yeah. if I offered you a deal? If I agree to Ooh. do whatever princess activities you want, will you promise that my family gets to do the activities they want? Sis, hmm. you don't have to do that. We want you to enjoy yourself too. Hmm. I don't want the vacation to end now or let down all of these ponies who are looking forward to seeing us. Hmm. So what do you say, Iron Will? Do we have a deal? Princess Twilight has a deal. Yeah. Great. So it looks like we have some. I think hooves are supposed to be a little more solid that than that. that. We have just enough to pick the winner of our grand prize raffle. Oh no. Well, who doesn't like prizes? What's the grand prize? All right, ponies. When the zeppelin flies, it's time for a prize. Yeah. <laughs> and respectful to me and my family. And now, without further ado, the winner is... Yeah. Star Tracker! Star Tracker? Congratulations, oh, Star that's Tracker. a cool name. Enjoy yeah. your prize. Cool design, too. Okay, Dad. What's the, what's the prize? Uh, <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. He got I up there fast. Have the prize. Congratulations to Star Tracker, who wins the grand prize. Spending the day with Twilight. The whole day... <laughs> well, well, I guess you should come with us, honorary family member. Sure. Oh, I was thinking the necklace. The bingo table. The, oh, there's gonna be so much fan art of this. <laughs> said to uh, give it a, a whirl. <laughs> oh, okay, uh, stalker. He's bordering on pinky level warping here. <laughs> I-19. Hey, now we're talking. This princess bingo is great. Did you get that one, Dad? Can any pony tell me how my dad is doing? <laughs> he said the princess bingo is uh, great. <laughs> how? Twilight is my favorite time of day. <laughs> it's also oh, nice. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> there are no words for this. Phew, He's sick it. even on the. And I'm ready to give you the tiny boat okay. for your life. <laughs> are you sure you're not airsick, Big Brother? Wow. Way to swallow it. No way. How could I be airsick? I'm in the water, so. It totally cancels out. You see sick though. <laughs> I don't think that's how it works. No. Nope. I'm ready if you are. Technically, oh, Princess Twilight Sparkle should officiate the Princess Paddleboat race. Rather than well, participating I in it. I could race your brother. Aww. Oh, well, as long as Shining Armor gets to race, I'm happy. <laughs> oh, I, seriously. That guy's I'm gonna starting to get creepy. Race tonight in my journal. <laughs> oh, it's just so exciting. Wonder who you got that idea from. Get set, go! Wow! I did not expect that. <laughs> just so everybody knows, I'm getting out of this boat because of how not sick I feel. Yeah, sure. Oh, that's all right, dear. We'll take you back to the room. <laughs> this cosplayer. <laughs> Where's Derpy? Why isn't she in this cruise? <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, it's adorable. Yeah, I'm hands so off the Earth Pony Fall. Or magic Flurry off the... That hat. Time. <laughs> That's right. I'm 
just on my way to take some old time abolition photos. Theme photo shoots are the best. <laughs> <laughs> and then do this a quick guy. and answer session on becoming an alicorn before mom's barrel ride. I, day I want fan art of Twilight in that hat. <laughs> Twilight, are you sure you don't mind doing all of these princess activities? Mind? What? Absolutely not. I mean, you guys are having fun, right? <sighs> Besides, I have to make sure these cruise ponies are happy if I want to be a good princess. You're already a good Putting princess, too Twilight. much on yourself, Twilight. Honestly, as long as I get to see the Northern Stars tonight with every pony, I'll be happy. Yeah, that's not gonna work. <clears throat> but right now, I gotta go take some pictures. See you later! Nice Why use of wing his hand. And make a princess friend. <laughs> <laughs> Bonk. I am so sorry, every pony, but it looks like Flurry needs her nap. Oh. Yeah, best not to oh, let her go a little right, too crazy there. Have to be a two -parter. I just hope I have time for one barrel ride with mom. No, <laughs> this is a goat. <laughs> The endless open air, the water in my mouth. This man is amazing. <laughs> Another relaxing vacation in the books, hon. Aw. Oh, honey, I know you're disappointed, but we waited as long as we could. Maybe you should take a break from these princess things. Disappointed? No! Mm. I've just been answering some detailed questions about alicorns. You know how much I love details! <laughs> I just yeah. don't want you to forget. It's your vacation, too. How can I when it's a it totally was. successful vacation? All right. Well, uh, we can't wait to see those northern stars. She's gonna miss them somehow. I will lift up yeah. to his side of the bargain. And Princess Star Tracker, really? One more thing to do for the day. <laughs> it's your last chance. Come get in line if you want the autograph session. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> There's only so many of them. You should be able to get through pretty quick. Ah, yeah. oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been waiting? <laughs> as long as it takes. <laughs> Waited to the last one, so he... What time is it? <laughs> so he could have the most time with her? I don't know. Well, you got to see it. Sort of. <sighs> oh, man. I missed them. I missed the Northern Stars. <laughs> you were right, Twilight. They were breathtaking. Oh, we wish you'd been here to see it, Sweet Pea, but we're sure you're making a whole bunch of cruise ponies happy. <laughs> I'm so happy I could cry. Oh, yeah. The cruise ponies are happy. My family is happy. Even Iron Will is happy. <laughs> you know who isn't happy? Me! Me. <laughs> oh, my heart. Oh. I'm sorry, but maybe that wouldn't have happened if you weren't practically standing on my tail. Not even my real family stands so close. <sighs> I mean, I don't blame her for getting frustrated, I but made that ouch. Deal with Iron Will so my family and the cruise ponies could have the vacation they wanted. What about what you wanted? I just want every pony to be happy. Well, sometimes ponies want more from a princess than you can give, and it can be hard to know where to draw the line. You seem to know pretty well. Once I had Flurry Heart, the line was easier for me to see. You will always have obligations as a princess, but you also have an obligation to yourself. Yes. You're right. I think I need to set some boundaries, but first, I owe some pony an apology. I can really hear the voice actor talk. Oh, voice actors talking on this one. Theory. Better, thanks. Hmm. He's not a bad guy. He's just <laughs> got I think I go. hero worship no, issues. <laughs> you should stay. I have something to tell you, all of you. I'm glad you all got to do the things you wanted, but I should have stood up for myself so that I could do what I wanted too. It wasn't fair of me to lash out at you. If I felt like you were standing too close. I should have said something. 
I'm sorry. Aww. What do you say we do something off the schedule? <gasps> Who are you? <laughs> We're gonna do something I want us to do. Changely? <laughs> honorary members too. Aww. Ice cream, nice. Nice. <laughs> Right now, she'll be up all night on a sugar rush. <laughs> you and your family have been really kind to include me, but you deserve your own vacation together. <laughs> and I'm really glad we met, too. <laughs> oh. Oh. Attention, it's okay. Boys. If it's your dream, come to the deck for ice cream. Oh, oh she's... Leave the princess alone. What yes. Say to Iron Will. It's okay, every pony. Ahem. <clears throat> First, I want to thank all of you for coming. It means a lot that you'd spend your hard-earned bits just to be with us. But I honestly came on this cruise to take some time off from being a princess. I'm just a pony too, after all. And even though I want every pony here to be happy, I'd really like to spend the rest of the cruise relaxing with my family. Of course, Princess Twilight. Pet voice. Why was this trip advertised as a cruise of the princesses Tell if you that. just wanted to get away? Because him. Real <laughs> cruise of the princesses makes no guarantees as to the participation of actual princesses. What? <laughs> oh no! <laughs> you stepped in at this time, buddy. Satisfaction not guaranteed. No <laughs> oh. And now who's flying the ship? He may be pushy and manipulative, but no pony can say that Minotaur isn't prepared. This is true. <laughs> There's still plenty of activities. We passed Philadelphia on the way back. Oh. I could give Flurry Heart a quick history tour. That's very thoughtful. Yeah, but no. right now, the family and I have something scheduled for you. Behold oh. the Northern Stars. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. And Shining Armor, I can't believe you're up there even though you're air sick. I am not air. Oh. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> Maybe I'm not feeling great. Whatever oh. <laughs> 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 you say. This is the only activity I need. Mm. Oh. You know, it's a good thing Shining Armor never became an alicorn. <laughs> he couldn't handle it. <laughs> Oh, I want to go back and check those voice credits. Oh. Man. This... Yet another angle to Twilight's story that they have needed to touch on for so long and have not it before now. It just... Oh... I mean, we, we, we've seen some build-up to this. You know, back with, uh, you know, Flurry of Emotions earlier, she was... Uh, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to ramble too much if I, if I try to do it here, but I'm going to say that there's... I've seen signs of there, there being build-up for this. Twilight is too hot on herself, and she tries too hard to please everyone else and constantly is, is sacrificing her own personal time and enjoyment. So, this is huge. Oh. Yeah, I'm going to stop right here. Uh, stay tuned for, uh, shortly for my commentary on this. Later. Alrighty. Well, we've got another convention episode. Definitely did not expect that this season. Uh, the, a second one this season. We already had one with Fame and Misfortune and one last season, too, with uh, Stranger Than Fan Fiction. Uh, they seem to be getting on a bit of a theme here, but... Uh, uh, I, I think this one was was definitely a very it, it was done very well very very gracefully and it you know just it, it was more like Stranger the fan fiction where it just kind of poked fun at some of the 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 things that occur at conventions and stuff some of the the running gags and whatever and and then just also gives us a little kind of little insight into what the voice actors you know another VIP guests themselves actually go through to when they do these 
that that's that's one thing that they haven't necessarily touched on yet in this uh, um, throughout these these kinds of episodes of the series. So and and it also brought to light a very interesting uh, aspect of Twilight being a princess that we hadn't really covered yet for her character either. So uh, yeah, just the further convention references. I mean, they they they, they really did it well. You know, I had cosplayers, you know, autograph sessions, you know, panels. You know, a panel on, you know, a Q&A session on alicorns or how to become an alicorn or something like that. It's like, where is M.A. Larson? Why didn't he write this one? <laughs> oh, boy. But, yeah, then two-part questions. Yeah, those can go quite long and, you know, all such things. But uh, I, 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 I can hear Tara Strong really talking a lot from personal experience in, in this episode for all the conventions she's been at. I mean, it's been a lot of more than just even the the pony stuff i mean she's been in uh, tons of conventions for all her different characters and stuff so i'm sure she's seen a, a lot of stuff in her day um well, it was nice to actually see uh, princess cadence has fans <laughs> for once she she seems to be a little bit of the forgotten princess kind, kind of sort of she doesn't seem to get nearly as much recognition as the rest of them do which is unfortunate i feel like because i really like the character and Britt mckillop is really awesome too i got to meet her at everfree this year uh really i think it just comes down to a matter of you know with the writing cadence herself has not really had all too much of a significant role in the show thus far so that not not comparatively speaking to the the rest of the princesses so i yeah um would be nice to finally get like an actual character focus episode right on cadence as opposed to just her being like in a more of a supporting role as she was again in this episode but re regardless you know I've, I've always liked her character and it was it was nice to see her and twilight basically being represented more or less as as equals i mean yeah clearly twilight had a lot more of the fans than cadence did but you know they both had the same you know the banners and everything so it's yeah it's just nice to to see that she gets some attention you know some a little bit of love <laughs> uh anyway and I do have to wonder, did this actually start after Fame and Misfortune or not? Because one thing that's always been rather lacking in this world is recognition for the main six's feats of uh, you know salvation and whatever for the, the, the sake of Equestria. It's... Um, I can't words today. Um, <laughs> They they have saved Equestria so many times over, and yet they can go around, walk around in cities like Manhattan, whatever, and not really get very much recognition at all. And I, to a degree, I, I think that's good for them because of that you know that way they're not constantly being bombarded by their fan bases and things like that. They can lead normal lives, which which I appreciate. But like there should be some level of recognition. We've started see, to see little hints of that in some of the past episodes. Like back in Flutterbrother, for example, when they acknowledge like twice in the episode, hey, you've you know you've saved Equestria like a dozen times or something, but there's never really been that fan following. But then after they published the Friendship Journal back in Fame and Misfortune, you know now all of a sudden they got all these fan bases and stuff, and and now at the beginning of this episode, it looked like Twilight was going through a lot of fan mail and stuff. That that was some of the paperwork because Spike was talking about having to do that in her absence, so. I, I, I do just wonder if that has set off kind of a chain reaction that's leading to some of these things now. It would make sense, but... Anyway, just speculation, you know, curious thoughts I had. Um, moving on to the family. The parents! We finally get to legitimately meet Twilight's parents. I, I For some reason, I, I thought we were just done with the family episodes of the season. Like, I felt like oh, all that stuff was done in the first half of the season, now we're on to other things. I wasn't expecting them to go back to this, so that's awesome. And I did note that uh, Nightlight and Twilight Velvet have new voice actors in this episode. Uh, back in the season six premiere, they were just voiced by Andrew and Tara, same voice actors for Shining Armor and Twilight Sparkle. So uh, I, I do like that they switched them though. They get more differentiation in the voices. It doesn't sound quite so weird that way. So I, I, I'm glad that they did that. Um, but more importantly than that, we actually get personalities for these characters because Pretty much all we've seen of them is their non-speaking roles in the flashback when Twilight was getting her cutie mark, and then in the season six premiere where they had a, just a brief couple lines of dialogue at the end of the episode, 
and you know, I was talking about, oh, the baby Flurry Hart is like, yes, they're they're loving grandparents. We get that. What about them? <laughs> you know, what what more is there about them? So you now we see here that Nightlight uh, appears to have a little bit of OCD uh, with you know nice organized numbers and lines and things. So now we know where Twilight gets that from. But then her mother, Twilight Velvet, uh, that this is going to be confusing to talk about this. The Twilights have been doubled. <laughs> Uh, Twilight Velvet, very much the adventurous daredevil type, which I never would have expected. <laughs> um, and it just, she's just so bubbly and stuff too, like very similar to Windy Whistles in, in that regard. I'm not sure how daredevilish that Windy Whistles is, but I wouldn't put it past her at all, especially knowing she's Rainbow Dash's mother. So I, I would love to see those two to, together. And in fact, I... I still want to see all the parents together. Like I, I've, I've said numerous times in past videos, I want there to be like a heartwarming Eve episode or something where all the families of the main six are together at Twilight's castle. And I mean, plenty of opportunity for crazy character interactions and you know, embarrassing you know childhood you know full stories about the main six growing up, things like that. It, it could be a very interesting uh, episode. Um, just have to. Uh, maybe put that one on my season eight wish list uh, uh, again because i think i had that on the season six wish list but now that we actually have all the parents it's actually more achievable now granted we aren't going to see bright mac and pear butter again unless we happen to get more flashbacks about something um could be stories from granny smith or something but um regardless it can happen now so we'll see but i gotta move on from that um so glad to finally meet the parents and Iron Will made his return. We haven't seen him since Putting Your Hoof Down, which was uh, Season 2, Episode 19. Took him five seasons to, to come back. Uh, which, you know, we've seen that before. Gilda was gone after early Season 1, didn't come back until Season 5. So, you know, sometimes it takes a while for these characters just to, to come back around again. Um, but that that's another thing off my Season 6 wish list. I wanted to know what happened to that particularly interesting character. And he's not exactly where I thought he would be. I, I'm honestly not sure what I thought he would be doing, but I guess I figured something closer to what he was doing, and apparently that job market has dried up now. So, you know, did everybody figure out that they could just say I'm not satisfied and not have to pay him? <laughs> it makes you wonder. Um, for, for that matter, did the Friendship Journal distribution have anything to do with that? I, I don't know, but... Anyway, he ended up trying to do this you know, uh, cruise thing, you know, themed cruises, and that in and of itself is not a problem, but he's turned into a bit of a, you know, shyster here. That, you know, it, it felt very much like a flim-flam type scheme, like a lot of bait and switch and, and fibbing and stuff going on to trick everyone into his scheme. And I mean, to the point he's like even flat out lying about some of the attractions that they were supposedly seeing over the sides of the ship. And, like. I didn't expect them to go that way. I mean, yeah, these these inspirational seminar things are always kind of a gray area, but it seemed like he was making a legitimate business out of it. Like, he was helping some ponies. Clearly, he did succeed at making Fluttershy more assertive. He just took it a little bit too far. But I wouldn't have expected him to resort to something like this. So I, I'm kind of scratching my head on that one a little bit. But... Um, it'd, it'd be nice if we could see him come back again at some point to get a little bit of vindication, you know, kind of like we saw with Flim and Flam in uh, Viva Las Pegasus. I mean, they didn't exactly completely change their ways, but it, at least they became more likable characters by helping to resolve the, the situation with the worst problem of Gladmane. So, be nice to see something like that for Iron Will, but we'll just have to see. Um... And he did sort of learn a lesson, at least, from the encounter with Twilight by, you know, not making guarantees he can't stand behind anymore. So now I was like, nope, no, you know, no refund, satisfaction, not guaranteed. <laughs> he really has uh, got a lot of, like, the Grunkle Stand vibe from Gravity Falls. It's, it's awesome. Anyway, um, moving on to the main topic of Twilight. Twilight Sparkle. I have to clarify that in this one. Twilight has a long history of uh, kind of being too hard on herself. Uh, just as a few quick examples of that, you know, Lesson Zero, and she is going nuts because she thought she was letting down her teacher and mentor, Celestia. Um, Twilight's Kingdom, when she is, you know, burdening herself with 
well, she had become burdened with all the the princess's magic, and she, and she was kind of pushing her friends away, like, no, I have to do this alone. And, uh, you know, even a flurry of emotions. That was actually uh, a lot closer, both timeline-wise and story-wise, to this episode, because with that, she was faced with fulfilling her princess duties, but also having to, to try and uh, be there for family. And... I, I'm not going to get into a whole discussion about that. Again, you can go watch my commentary on that reaction if you want. But basically, it was it was a matter of she tried too hard to shoulder all the burden herself and not reach out to anyone for help. And you know, she she wanted too much to to be there for everyone else, to give of herself to till it hurt basically, and it backfired on her in a big way. And it's. Uh, and along those lines too it's it's really hard for her to just kind of take a break from from things like i said there she was unwilling to give up her her princess duties and there there's been other uh, other times we've seen stuff like that too and even even just when she does like take a break it tends to be things like reorganizing her library for the hundredth time and you know locking spike in the castle with her for like several days on end to do that and things like that like i think i was in what about discord and stuff it, it just it's things that she maybe herself does enjoy a little bit, but it's not really getting away from things, and it's not spending time with family. So, I do give her credit, she was just baking with Spike, so that was a little bit different, but it wasn't the same as a family vacation like this. So, and even here, she wasn't going to give up on that, but Spike stepped up, and for, I, I love that motion, just like, rolling up the sleeves, Get out of the door! Get out of here and go on this vacation. I got this. You know, I let me take care of the fan mail and all this other stuff, and you you go have a good time. Uh, this is great to see him finally like man up a little bit and, and you know put his foot down and shove her out the door. You know, Spike definitely is not the little baby dragon he started out as. Even though he hasn't physically grown, he has definitely matured emotionally, and he's he's really stepping up with some things. I love to see that. Also love to see, uh, or love to hear that Twilight actually said, "As like, hey, you're as much of a part of the family as as anyone else." I mean, we we know that they care very much for each other, but it's just so nice to hear Twilight actually say that after all the time she's kind of taken him for granted and and whatnot. So that was that was really a kind of a heartwarming moment for me on that. Uh, but yeah, so even in, in this situation, well, part of what leads Twilight to get herself into this situation is she just has too big a heart. I shouldn't say too big a heart. It's She has a big heart about things. She doesn't want to let anyone else down. You know, the, Again, she has a long history of this. People expect things of her, and she feels that she has to do her best to deliver and not disappoint anyone. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but there is a limit to how much you can actually deliver on the expectations that are placed on you. And sometimes I think we end up, I've done this myself, where we actually artificially place even higher expectations of ourselves than what others are actually demanding of us. Because we feel like people are expecting it even though they haven't come out and actually said it. So it, it's, it's an easy situation to get into. Here, that shouldn't have been the case at all, though. It, they got tricked into this whole thing by Aaron Will. And I honestly think that that this whole thing would have gone a lot better if uh, Twilight had actually been, you know, contracted for this properly ahead of time and had, you know, made the plans. I mean, she, she, she plans everything, so she would have made a checklist and was like, okay, I got these blocks of time for this, also have time for this, and blah, blah, blah she could have made it work and everybody would have been a lot happier I, mean, I don't really get why iron will didn't just ask her outright to begin with you know is it like he's afraid she say no so i'm just going to do it before they can have a chance to say no or i don't know what was going through his mind there but because of the situation uh, you know twilight wanted her best to that wanted badly to have everyone try to have a good time i mean if she had refused the cruise would have been canceled and both her fans and her family all would have been sent home. The whole thing would have been ruined. So she made a deal, albeit a very bad one, to go along with Iron Will's scheme in order to try and let everyone else have a great time, thinking she could still find a few little breaks here and there to enjoy some things for herself. She should not have made that, that assumption. <laughs> um, 
and yeah, as uh, as we would have expected from that, she ended up missing out on some things that she, you know, wanted to enjoy for herself. And I, I really felt bad for her when she missed the the Northern Stars, you know, and the welled up, welled up in tears. I mean, I've I've been there. There's been some things in life that I have screwed up on something and missed out big time on something that w would have been really special to me. And it's it's heartbreaking when that happens for sure. And uh, like I said, Cadence had a really great supporting role in this once again. Um, you know, it's good insights about work-life balance, basically, especially now that she's a mother. And uh, she's kind of, both in this episode and even some previous episodes, she's kind of become a bit of like a life experience mentor to, to Twilight. I mean, Celestia has been there more from like a, you know, sage wisdom standpoint. Cadence has been there for her more from like, hey, this is a real, this is the way things are in real life type of standpoint. So, um, you know, both, both, one is not better than the other, they're just different. So it's, it's nice for her to have that. And I, I do like the way uh, Cadence was kind of gracefully handling herself in this scenario. Uh, like that, that scene where she uh, was needing to get away from her fans with all, you know, it was like apparently a bunch of mothers with all the foals and stuff there. She, uh you know made up this excuse like oh flurry heart is I'm, I'm sorry but it looks like it's flurry hearts nap time i'm afraid we have to go now you know yeah it's a little bit of a fibbing there but it, it's a lot better than just uh doing what twilight did you know with all her pent-up frustration and anger and then exploding later on and causing issues that way so um at least there's a bit of, of grace in that situation but yeah, she was able to finally impress upon twilight that you know hey as a pony princess, or you know, I'm, this applies to anyone who's in a position of being a celebrity of any sort or whatever. That you know, you cannot give as much as people ask of you. It's never going to be possible. There's always going to be more demands than what can reasonably be met, and you have to know where to draw that line so that you don't burn yourself out that will happen if you just constantly give and give and give and give and don't do anything for yourself you will burn out badly so and you know i and and, and frankly twilight deserves to have some some time to herself and especially for time with her family as well that that is super important um and, you know i i even saw kind of an instance of this myself here at, uh, at BronyCon this year i mean not not this exact situation but there was a, a one of the autograph sessions where one of the voice actors didn't show up, uh, at least on time. He either skipped it or was very late, and I learned that it was because he was gone um, to you know somewhere out in, out in the town to see like a local attraction thing before the place closed, and it was his only chance to to do that. So I was able to slide out and do it. And at first, the gut reaction is kind of like, well, but he's supposed to be here. Like they're contracted to be here. Why is you know why is he doing that? But, I mean, you got to keep in mind, these, this is work for them. When these VIP guests come to these conventions, they are at work. They have a contract that says, you know, you have to be here this time and do these things and blah, blah, blah. And they're basically book solid for the entire, you know, the entirety of the three days of these conventions. They really don't have much for just fun socializing time and stuff unless it's very specifically, you know, planned out or, or something. And even that I suspect might not be very much because, you know, when you go into the evenings, a lot of places are closed and uh, they just get so tired out from the the grind of the day of all the stuff that they have to do at these conventions. It's, you know, they're pretty worn out by the time the, the con is over. It isn't just the fans that are worn out. The, the VIPs are as well. You know, they're humans just like we are. And uh, and so it's like, hey, if they need to take, a, you know, an hour or something to go out and do something awesome while they are, are here and have the chance, I mean... <laughs> Far be it for me to stand in their way. I mean, I'd, I'd want to do the same thing. So, you know, it's it's just, just like I said, it's kind of a friendly reminder here to show like, hey, these these people have lives too, and they need some break time as well, just like we do. So, um, it's just awesome to to see that touched on. But anyway, um, back to Twilight. Um, yeah, in the end, she just let all her pent-up frustration and anger over everything just explode out, and, you know, she ended up stomping on Star Tracker's hoof, which wasn't very nice and stuff. I mean, he certainly wasn't helping anything by being the overbearing fan that he was, 
but at the same time, Twilight wasn't really dealing with that situation appropriately either. I mean, clearly he's a pretty nice guy, just, you know, a bit of a hero worship thing uh, going on there, and he just needed to be told to, like, hey, be respectful and back off a little bit, you know. And I think she was just so hung up on, like, well, I just got to do this real quick, and then I can get to things that I want to do, and I won't have to worry about this anymore, and she just was not addressing with the situation, more trying to ignore it, so... Yeah, again, it backfired on her a little bit. But once she did realize her mistake, and I, I, I love that she apologized to him, and the the thing that really is makes it clear that she got the lesson here is she went off schedule. She did something that wanted the whole family to do something that's not blocked out on a schedule anywhere. It's just like, hey, let's just go, you know, hang out as a family and have some ice cream. <laughs> That is a huge thing for Twilight. I don't think we've ever seen her do anything like that before. And clearly they were all shocked as well. So that that was a huge step forward, I think, for, for Twilight and her maturity uh, here. For, for her to allow herself to do something like that willingly. That's that's a big step. So so that was awesome. And, and I, I got to um, hand it to him, too, for the, the fan portrayal in here. Um, you know, again, this... this this one is a pretty friendly, you know, overall parody of the conventions and stuff in general. The fans weren't really too crazy or overbearing for the most part. There's a couple that were odd. That one in the window needs a restraining order. But <laughs> um, really, it was... The, uh, they, were, they were pretty respectful overall. And I love the part at the end where when Twilight finally explained the situation, you know, they're like, well, of, of course you can have time yourselves. And we didn't mean to take this from you that wasn't our intention like we were just told you were going to be here for this and then once they discovered what was going on then of course they're all raging at, at iron will and <laughs> and right rightfully so so um yeah I'm, I'm just glad that they didn't have the fans become too crazy in, in that one because i'd like to think that for the most part you know we as the fans of this show we are respectful of them and that is as well i said i certainly would never want to take anything away from from the the VAs and the, the, the VAs have made it very clear that they they definitely enjoy as much of it as it is draining of them and work for them they also love hanging out with us I mean that's the reason they keep coming back to these conventions because they do love hanging out with us and spending that time um, as, as exhausting as it might be so I, I think we've done an awesome job with that overall um, so yeah just you know continue Keep these things going. It's it's great for everyone. So, yeah, fantastic episode. A uh, really great one for for Twilight. And uh, yeah, the the season just keeps getting better and better. And we're quickly winding down to the end here. So, thanks for watching, everyone. And I will catch you again soon for another reaction later.